All right, welcome everybody to another Monday, another expert interview. And as always at Dave Cooper Live, we are trying to bring you the people and the processes that are doing it better. So I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. We have another big week for you. We had some change ups on today's show, but we had good change ups on today's show. Today, we're going to talk about IBS a little bit more because guess what? There's going to be some full access to all the education to IBS member or not. We're going to talk about some of the building systems, uh, educational events that happen during IBS. They are making all this available. You're hearing it right here on Dave Cooper Live. How cool is that? We're going to have John McCreary just join us in one moment. But first, at Dave Cooper Live, we are bringing you the people and the processes that are building it better. Our guests and topics include experts in building systems, building science, building codes, and the tech used to build it better. We are always seeking out the best and the brightest in construction and discovering all the innovative ways buildings come to life. And today is no different. I'm really looking forward to it. And guess what? Special guest, Greg Ugaldi, immediate past chairman, NAHB, will be on the show shortly as well. And guess what? We're going to have some updates and we're going to continue the conversation that we started on our roundtable last Monday. So today's going to be a great show. Definitely get yourself some popcorn and some coffee and be sure to join us. But for right now, let's bring in John McGeary. Mr. John McGeary, welcome to the show. Good morning, Dave. How are good you morning. today? How are you today? Very good, sir. Very good. Got got my vaccine this weekend. Um, good to go. I love it. I love it. Great. So you got the vaccine. We're getting ready for all kinds of wonderful uh, NAHB events programs, education, not just later in the year, but uh, we got some special surprises coming up for people for the show today. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun to talk about. So John, just so everybody knows who you are, if they're just tuning in for the first time, why don't you just give us a quick overview of who John McGeary is and we'll hop right into it after that. Yeah. So as you said, John McGeary, I'm the Senior VP of Brand Strategy and Business Development at NAHB. So that it's a catch-all for a lot of things here at the association. Uh, my team works on uh, the member savings program. I head up the production team, so we do a lot of the video work uh, for our membership, a lot of internal things and some customers that we have in the, uh, the DC area. Uh, Builder Books, which is uh, books that we publish specifically for the home construction market. Uh, my team sells advertising and sponsorship for the IBS show and then everything outside of IBS. So we're, we're busy, uh, always trying to provide value for the membership in the industry. And that's what we do every day here at NAHB. Yeah, for sure. For sure you do. Listen, you guys are always working tirelessly uh, for education, for, <coughs> excuse me, wrong pipe, for codes. <coughs> I mean, if you think of everything that you guys do, yeah. <coughs> I mean, you're not just out there lobbying for builders. You guys are out there putting together educational, you're putting out events. I'm joking over here, John. Oh, what's going <laughs> on? I know. Hey, listen, it's live. If it can happen, it'll happen. But you guys yeah. are out there putting out educational events. You're putting out uh, live event shows. <clears throat> you're bringing in guest note speakers. Let's kind of summarize a little bit about IBS, who we had, like Mike Rowe was the keynote this year and a great keynote if that. But why don't we start walking through what we – had at IBSX and what now people have access to because I think they're going to be surprised. Yep, yep. So, uh, but before I switch you over to my <laughs> deck, you know, as a lot of people know, we we had some challenges on the exhibitor side, but but what we found is that people really enjoyed uh, the education and the content, and we tried uh, a couple of new things this year, which were absolutely incredible. Uh, we had something called a shop talk, which was. Uh, highly topical uh, right. networking between members. And, you know, you talk about the, the lumber situation. Well, the members all got to talk under one virtual room about what their challenges were and where they found lumber and what they're going right. through and, you know, you know, all the challenges they face. And really, it was all about learning from each other. And it's that, that really important networking piece that everyone gets at the live show that they were able to achieve on the virtual show. Right. So we're really proud of that. Um, you know, we had, um, we transferred actually all the education to the Builder Show uh, platform. So that was easy. 
And then a couple of weeks later, we were able to take all those exhibitors and put them on buildershow.com. So right now, every exhibitor that was on um, IBSX Virtual is now on buildershow.com. And anyone in the industry, as long as they register, and you got to register by March 31st. So I'll remind you that um, if you register by March 31st, you have access um, to all that education, um, you know, uh, all, all the viewing of new products and services in the industry. But, but just let me, uh, if it's okay, Dave, I'll go through uh, basically what's available and then I'll, I'll highlight some of uh, the things that I think uh, your audience would want to take advantage of. Yeah, for sure. And I'm going to pull up your deck in one second. So just, just to be really be clear here, everybody yeah. has an opportunity to get access to all of this information that one mm -hmm. of the biggest uh, organizations that support the builders in our country, the biggest, mm -hmm. they're getting access to all this inf inf uh, information, whether you're a member or not a member, there's a small fee and we'll talk about that. But I mean, this is, this is information that otherwise would cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, you right. guys are putting it out there and saying, hey, thank you. We really want to share what we're doing. So and, I just want to yeah, make and Dave, let me Let me point out what, one fact is that we produced just about as much content that we would for the live show. Because remember, we were, we were pretty far down the path when we had to go virtual only. Right. So the team is already building the whole conference program and, and the shop talks and the networking and all of that was in place. So we produced just as much as we do at the live show virtually. So what you're getting is really everything you get at the live show. And most producers and, and most associations would have produced less for the virtual, but we decided right. to maintain uh, that high level of uh, the quantity, but more important, importantly, the, the quality behind uh, what yeah. we produce for our members and everyone else in the industry. Oh, and, and to be really clear, you actually get more. You want to know why I think that and, and, and why I think you get more is because you have the chance to see all of the education. When you're at the mm -hmm. show, you got to pick and choose where you want to spend your time in three days. You guys mm -hmm. are now opening this up to say, well, I don't have to miss anything. I can attend everything that I want to attend because it's going to be on demand. Yes. Right. And on demand all, all the way through the end of June. So all you really have to do after you register, you have access to it through June. But the one thing like everyone has to remember is like you really got to dedicate the time. And, you know, all the sessions were pretty much shorter than what they were in live. So you, you, right. you have to dedicate 45 minutes. And so I would schedule like, you know, Friday afternoons all the way from now to yeah. June. You can consume all the content if you just dedicate that 45 minutes a week. Right. And just put it on your calendar and it's it, and it's all there. So, yeah, and, it, and it's 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 such great content. I mean, I've been going back and, and and going through it. I mean, normally, right, this is all done at the live event. People like me don't get a chance to, to view it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now that it's all virtually, it's 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 great. I mean, it's just it's, That's true. You know, right? you kudos to our team. They bring in such great, great, you know, industry icons and, and people who really know everything there is to know about home construction. It's, it's, it's yeah. quite remarkable. Um, you know what, you, you made a really good point. And I just want to point it out. You're right. Normally you guys organize the show, you put the show on, but you're mm -hmm. so busy putting out fires and making things sure things are working and people where they need yeah. to be that you actually never get to see the show. In this mm -hmm. format, you, you're able to go back and see the show and even make yourself better and say, well, I do this differently, or I would do this differently. I think that's amazing. And for all of you, uh, Dave Cooper Live supporters out there and, and what we're doing. This is, an, and this is why, and I'm not telling the ASB, they don't pay me to say any of this stuff. You know, they're guests on the show, just like everybody else by invite only. This is an opportunity to learn from people because there's so much information. I, I suggest everybody take advantage of it. All right, John, I'm off my uh, soapbox. Here we go. What do you got for us? All right, so, so just as a quick reminder, and uh, we let everybody know prior to the show, but again, there's still those 100 education sessions for you to gain access to, 30 demos, which were all done um, on location. Typically, we do demos at the live show, and it's on the show floor, but the demos we did for virtual were all on location. Uh, we had four general sessions, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, high high quality people there. Uh, Mike Rowe we have on there. 
uh, Rob Dietz with his economic uh, outlook from our, our own NAHB, uh, right. 60 design ideas in 60 minutes, and the closing uh, keynote from Dex Torque Barton. Um, and also over 250 exhibitors. Uh, and and what, what we've you know instructed all the exhibitors to do, we're really focused on those new and in innovative products that they have. Um, the, what you'll get to see now, which actually you didn't get to see during the virtual event, uh, was the IBSX awards are up there now. Uh, right. You can visit with the 10 companies that uh, were part of the uh, startup zone. Uh, the SGC Pro, uh, Pro Builder uh, Show Village, you, there's a link where you can go experience at home. And that was a really, really cool 3D um, example of products and services that were put into um, put into a home. And then, of course, our famous uh, New American Home and New American Remodel. Um, and I got to tell you, Dave, we, we had more people looking at the, the uh, New American Home and Remodel virtually than we typically have uh, people walking through uh, right. the homes uh, when we're able to do it live. So that was a, a wow. bit of a win as well. Um, so just to reiterate, you know, if you're an NHB member, as long as you register by end of day Wednesday, it's free. All that content that I just mentioned for free. free. All of it. Even if you're not a right, even if you're not a member, it's ninety nine dollars, right? And you have access to all that content. And just to remind you that the typical fee for all that content live is three hundred and fifty to six hundred dollars for members, and five hundred dollars to eight hundred dollars for non-members. So you're getting all the same content only for ninety nine dollars. Open to end of June, but you gotta register. Um, by the end of the day, March 31st. And it's all yours all the way up to the end of June. Wow. I mean, that's, I mean, listen, that yeah. Justin by itself, um, I mean, even to me, you know, there's some educational stuff that I already looked at during the event. Uh, listening mm -hmm. to the keynote with Mike Rose, always inspiring. One, one, he's just yeah. entertaining, right? But two, he has a really good beat on workforce development and what's out there just from his Dirty Job series. And I, and I specifically heard him say on the show that he would love to partner more with the National Association of Home Builders to grow this conversation. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot more coming out with that. And, 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 and finally, what's close and dear to my heart, off-site you know, off building systems and, and what have yep. you, had a big play in this year's IBSX as well and had a lot of content. Yeah, no, and, and you know that's why you know I have up on the screen now. Like, just right. this is just you know five of the one hundred, you know, things that you could check out on the website. But you know, knowing your audience, I think they would want to know. You know, we we have what we call the building knowledge session, right. and uh, panelization, the benefits and challenges. I mean, we know there there's people out there who who do this really well. In some areas of the country, it's a little bit more pre prevalent than others. Right. Yeah, but the two speakers, uh, Ben Bigelow and Samik Gosh from uh, University of Oklahoma did a really, really great job of giving an update on where the industry is with panelization and the challenges and the successes as well. So I, I highly recommend uh, that if you sign up to take a look at that one. Um, high Performance Homes uh, is the next one. That was a master's session. So a master's session is a little bit longer. Uh, it's typically up to two hours, but they go. it's a real in-depth conversation Okay. Uh, the reason why I picked the, uh, this one up is uh, it's a closer look into high performance uh, home strategies, um, home innovation, home tech technologies are going to be really big. We started it um, this year uh, on the virtual platform, but we right. will have a home tech zone at the live IBS show in February of 22 in Orlando. Right. Um, so a lot on technology. Uh, those demos, again, talking about smart home technology. I mean, th this is the future. And um, and you can imagine, like, everyone's concerned about uh, safety, right? Safety and security, um, right. but all the all the products and services involved there. A game changer session, uh, things that are revolutionary within the industry. So uh, we had a, a futurist there, um, uh, the coming trends that will drive your business strategy, a look into the future. Uh, we had someone in from Ford, uh, you know, giving us all the details on that. Um, and then uh, the last Game Changer session, which is really, uh, you know, it was a really good one. It was from a, uh, Mary Kelly. Uh, she was in um, the Navy. Uh, she's okay. retired. 
and really gave an inspirational um, top lessons uh, for leading during uh, times of change. And that certainly um, I could say that we've all been in a, an extreme time of change in the last year. And right. that's just something that um, I think, you know, your listeners and, and the home technology, the home construction industry would be really interested in, um, in taking advantage of. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's awesome. So we got, we got veterans uh, talking about change, which I think is great. Futurists, which is, is always interesting because uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it's funny. You remember we watched Star Trek at kids and some of that stuff's coming to reality now, or if you think oh, yeah. about it, this, this stuff really does happen and people do predict where it's going to come and go. And, you know, pretty soon we won't have iPhones and Androids anymore. It'll all be done through glasses. I'm here. And, you know, yeah. And thinking right. about, you know, today's builders, right? It's so much easier to, to install, install all that technology as your right. building home rather than retrofitting. Sure. But there are definitely some companies that have been really been revolutionary in making it easier to retrofit your home for, for home technology. So it's, right. it's been, it's been a wild ride, but it, it's been great. Oh, I bet, I bet it has. I bet it has. All right. Is that the last slide or can. That's it. That's it, sir. I, I love it. So. You know, if everybody's just joining us, we will be having Greg Ugaldi joining us in just a few moments. Uh, he's going to pop in right around 1.30 in a few minutes. So uh, we are going to continue last week's conversation, and we're going to deep dive a little bit into what Greg was saying at the very end of our show uh, in regards to the three L's, lumber, you know, and the impact of lumber and what's happening in the world. For God's sakes, we got a cruise ship stuck in the canal. Actually, I think they got it out this morning, but you know, oh, these absolutely. all impact what's happening in the economy. I mean, it is it is a mess out there. Even Tim Sims has been putting out some some reports of what's going on. So, all right, while we're waiting for Greg, John, here we go. What are we looking forward to in 2021? I mean, give it give us a little bit of insight on what what's happening under that full head of hair you got there. Oh God, well, I mean, right now, as you know, we're we're working on the uh, IBS 22 show. I mean, everything. And, and, you know, one of the themes, and I'm, I'm so glad you asked, I mean, I just gave you one of them, right? Home technology, um, yeah. that will be a major theme and, and a, an important part of the show, not only on the show floor, but uh, in, the, in the content, in the, um, in the conference, in the sessions. Um, yeah. And also, we, we're going to introduce a new product zone on the show floor. What I love about this is that a company who exhibits in the show will be able to put um, a couple of their products within the new product zone, right? So that attendees can kind of take a quick look around in one location, right. look and see what they would find interesting that's being introduced into the marketplace. Uh, take note of, um, you know, what companies are, are have presented products and then they can look, go visit with those products. So wow. we're all, it's all about making the show floor a lot more efficient and then also giving, giving the exhibitors uh, an opportunity to showcase that one product or service that they really want right. to get in front of uh, the leading builders of the industry. Yeah. Um, the other um, awesome. uh, show feature that we're working on is just the startup zone. So we, I had mentioned that we did a little bit of that in the virtual world. Okay. These are um, up and coming companies, brand new companies entering the marketplace with new and innovative products that you haven't even seen before. Um, you know, a lot of these companies may be just getting into the market or quite frankly, they've got a new invention that they want to get, you know, all the, all the builders opinions on like, right. Hey, I've invented this product. Do you think it's something that your home buyers would like, or do you think it would yeah. make your jobs easier? You know, would you buy this if I build it, if I make it, if I manufacture this product yeah. so that it's all about new technology and innovation. So there's definitely a common theme here. New product zone, startup zone, and uh, and home technologies. I, I I think this is actually you know really really great um, you know because here's the deal I go to IBS every year right and I love mm -hmm. it I'm walking around streaming doing doing what I do and you're right I mean little things that are making big impacts can get buried in that million square feet of floor space right mm -hmm. so so if you're gonna start pulling out the bits and pieces of new technology to showcase some of these innovative companies, innovative minds, whether it's product, technology, whatever the case is, will make a huge difference. I, I would imagine that should just be right when you walk in right there. 
I don't know. Right, you know, it's right at, you know what? It, good point. It's right at the entrance of the South Hall. So you walk into the South Hall, you'll be able, and everything's all right yeah. there. So you'll be able to walk through the uh, new product zone. Behind the new product zone will be the startup area, right. right? So new products, new companies, and then like you know, you, you know, everyone will walk out with like be kind of wowed about wow, here are all right. the great new things going on in the industry. Then let me go to the show floor and explore these companies. Let me talk to these companies about these new products, you know, right. that they're putting forth and let me see if they're a fit for me and how it might be able to transform my my sure. business. And, you right. know, so it's just a really um no, we're really excited about it. And we think we think it's really at the right time as well. You know, it's been sure. it'll be two years since we've been live, right? And uh I can tell you that, you know. Our members and a lot of people in the industry are really looking forward to coming back live in February when we're in uh, in Orlando. Yeah, well, I, I know I know I am for sure. I, I miss the people part of it. You know, I do it every day and it's great. And I'm meeting people from all over the world, but I still miss that handshake. I miss the cocktail hours, mm -hmm. you know, just the, you put in a hard day at the show and you just kind of chill out and meet new friends and meet new people. I, I miss I miss that side of it greatly. So. What about how's it going to change next year education wise you know because mm -hmm. education's changing training's changing is it training yeah. is it changing should it change you know, what are you going to do next year because I, I would imagine you're going to kind of do a combination of virtual and live it would make sense yeah no that that's a good question and so we learned a lot from our our first uh, virtual experience obviously right. but the real win was on um the content side, the, you know, okay. the, the sessions and the demos yeah. and the shop talks, like, right. the, you know, like I was talking about the shop talks before, we have to figure out how we can do that in a live environment, right? How can we set up a situation where attendees can really talk about issues and learn from each other and, you know, you know, talk about lumber and workforce development in an right. open forum um and and find out you know how how their fellow associates are solving these problems um so we're definitely going to be a forum right. for that um i think you'll see some changes there um you know i i just uh got a survey from the freeman decorating company who did they do our decorating for the show and they you know they're they do these surveys and um they service a wide range of shows in a lot of different industries so okay. in their survey they talked about the comfort level of people coming back to shows first quarter right. of 2022, 90% of the people said, you know what, I'm by then, if I'm vaccinated and, you know, uh, the environment is safe, I, I want to come back to going to live shows. So right. we're feeling really, really good, really, really good. And as you know, in our industry, uh, we were deemed essential in the beginning. So our, our members and everyone in the, in the industry has been working, right? And they've right. learned how to do it safely. So, you know, that shouldn't change when they come to a live right. event, right? And, uh, and especially since it's uh, first quarter of next year. So we're feeling, we're feeling really confident that um, the attendance will be, will be really good. Sure, so IBS, we're, we're back in Orlando this year, Florida. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you it's nice and warm here right now. And it's also nice and warm <laughs> in February most times. So yeah. uh, we've been down here for a little bit. Um, and. Uh, do we have uh, when does registration and open up for that? So registration will open up September first. September first. So put it on your calendar yep. and make your hotel reservation as soon as it opens. Yep. Yep. Hotels right. and registration. Um, also, it's early bird rates. So right. you know we talked a lot about um, the sessions and the conference, and um, it's always cheaper right when we first open. So take advantage of it when you get that email or you get that note or write it on your calendar. We open up September one. Okay. Um, and then we just, you know, we take it from there and, um, yeah, we continue to work on, you know, what we hope will be one of the best IBS shows to date. Um, I wow. could tell you that, you know, after being a year off from the live event, uh, we're just hearing nothing, but, you know, our members want to get back together and, and, and network and learn and, you know, just be part of the industry and celebrate the industry. And, um, they're all looking forward sure. to it. So, so are I'm we. looking forward to it, John. Come on, man. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. All right. So there you have it, everybody. We have, uh, we have 
$99 non-member all access pass to all the education training that uh, IBSX has to offer. It's all there for the taking. All that information you have till June, what was it? June 30th. June 30th to uh, to take it all in. That's 45 minutes a day. John already did the math, which I think is uh, f phenomenal. So you can catch everything that IBSX has to offer. If you are already a member of the National Association of Home Builders and a member, in my mind, you have to be a member of Building Systems Council too if you're in the industry. But if not, it's free. It's part of your membership. They're giving it all yep. to you again. You get to watch it for free. Non-members, $99, great deal. Uh, yep. There's so much education there. You can train yourself and, and learn new things. So yeah, I just, love it. You just have to register by March 31st. That's two days, two and a half days, two and a half days, end of day Wednesday. We're cutting it off and it's only available to those who, who registered up to that point. So there you go. Deadline. Just get online, register, and you'll have access all the way through June 30th. Deadline we'll, we'll be is all 30. taken care of. All right, listen, so that's only a couple of days, so go sign up for it. All right. Hey, listen, uh, John, really appreciate having you on the show. We're going to pop Greg in here. I know you're busy, busy, busy. You got some things. Thank you for coming on uh, today. No, thank you, Dave. Yep. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, hey, listen, we'll see you online virtually. Yes. All right. Thanks, Absolutely. John. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Bye now. All right, there you have it. So that's the first half of the show. And guess what? Now we're going to get into the second half of the show. And you know the second half of the show. When we have Greg Ugaldi on, there's something always that's intelligent to say. Somebody has an open mind about where the industry is going and has some wonderful statistics on what's happening out there because he is talking at the highest level. So why don't we bring Greg on right now? Mr. Ugaldi, what's happening? How you doing today? Man, you know what? Listen. I, I, every time I see you and John, I just wish I had a head of hair like you guys, man. It's it's amazing. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing great. I have to tell you, you know what you guys are doing at the NHB, having John on to give an update and uh, kind of a back pass uh, inside look to say, hey, this is what's happening right now at the International Builders Show for all the Dave Cooper Live fans out there. Uh, mm -hmm. For them to go and do what you guys are doing and making this education, this training, these keynotes uh, accessible, nobody else is doing that. That's right. That's right. You know, one of the things, Dave, I, I was telling you, we have a series of, of meetings and updates today. One of yeah. them is this eviction moratorium concept for around the country. Okay. Well, NAHB, we just won a huge case for our members where our landlords can go in looking for relief. They've put money aside, but we have judges that clearly see that there's a need to support landlords as well. I mean, you know, what, what the piece that's missing is that landlords, and, you know, you see a lot of these building systems right. now, how we can start putting in all, all these different layers of housing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have mortgages when you build those houses too. So if that's landlords right. start paying, if, if uh, the tenants stop paying the landlords, the buck stops there as well. So we've won a big case and we just got wow. an update on some of the others that, that we have pending on these types of issues. We're always looking to help um, and benefit our, our the people renting right. from us. But at the same time, we need to really make sure that we're not losing these buildings and facilities because it's not being done properly. So and, and the yeah. courts tend to listen to us. DOJ, once we get in these positions, they tend to be uh, reasonable as well. So we'll see. You know, uh, uh, and again, you know, let's just point this out and Greg, because this is the behind the scenes stuff that most people don't understand membership goes to. Uh, I didn't understand it before I really started doing this live full time and talking to everybody at the NEHB. And for those of you just joining us, this is not paid for this. NHB, Greg and everybody, they're guests just like everybody else on the show by invitation only. They're, they're, they're helping us grow. They're helping spread the word. And they are one of the biggest uh, names in the industry for builders, for suppliers, manufacturers, all of us. So, Greg, that's great news. I'm, I'm super happy for that. All right. So, Greg, I mean, that's a full day's work right there, just having that conversation. But let's get into right. kind of what we were talking about last week. You know, what is the most significant problem U.S. builders face was one of the questions, right? Can we bring the industry together? was another one of the questions, right? 
you made a comment, you know, and we were talking about lumber uh, increases of $24,000 per house. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's a reality now. Uh, and for every $1,000 uh, increase in housing equals 154000 household priced out of the market, right? $154,000 of households priced out of the market. I can't get my names right. 154,000 households are priced out in the market, right? So we take we take all this together and then you add 25 basis points, increase the rate to 1.3 million households priced out of the housing market. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Um, you were touching on this at the end of our show. We were talking about the three L's, lumber, labor, and land. We have a ship stuck in the canal right now, yeah. which, is, which is stopping billions of dollars of trade. There's all kinds of information running around from John Burns, you know, Tim Sims put out, it's called bingo. And it's just listing lumber prices, steel prices, right. all these fluctuating things that seem to be out of our control. Where are you at with it? That's a lot. So, <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, it, it, it's interesting because um, first I, I thought the panel was uh, incredibly uh, active on this discussion, and uh, we really synergize very well. And I mean, we we listen to each other, and we introduced a lot of what these topics are, and where we have to go as an industry in the future. But one of the things that you see very quickly is that as we do the scales, right, of, of what we need going into the future, and you know my mantra has always been housing affordability, right? So the, the overriding factor of all building is how are we going to pay for it? How are the consumers? How are we? And you know uh, Dave Cooper Live is starting to look at that consumer angle, but we need to be able to provide housing that's safe for people and that people can pay for. That's where building systems comes in. Now, those stats in the information that you just provided are so key because think about that. So if we, and you know, you could do the numbers, but just to, to reinforce what you just said. So if we know that our statistics are showing us that for every thousand dollars that a home increases in cost, we knock out, we wave at the door by to 154,000 households. Okay. So now look at lumber, just the lumber increases year right. over year. We're at 180% increase. If it's $24,000 on average, you see where I'm going. You yeah. take 24,000 and you multiply it by 154,000 households that we're saying goodbye to. One material, one quantity, right? And that's, that's what you have. So you start piecing all this together. You start piecing together your material increases. And that's why... When I look at building systems, I see that they're, it's so wide open, the impact that building systems can done properly, off-site construction can have on our industry. There's so many places to take advantage of economies of scale and to jump in and really help our industry. Sure. Let's drive that three, four, maybe approaching five at some point. Let's triple that without even batting an eye. We should be able to triple it and then really grow from there. Yeah. You mean you would think with, with such an affordability issue with the housing crisis that we're in, you know, that 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 we would be, you know, the NHB is taking a hard look at it. The politicians in Washington. I mean, we really need to understand how to get a hold of this. But like you said, offsite construction offers some solution to those impacts of the changes by buying, you know, train loads of lumber, by being able to get the efficiency of construction, you know, through the masses. It allows you to negotiate better prices when you're buying in such large volume from suppliers. You agree? Yeah. So in one of the things they think that you're yeah. starting to really hit on as well is this whole workforce piece, right? The yeah. education of a workforce. Let's get people to work with their hands. But think about the advantage there. If we can cut down on the number of sites that we have to have qualified labor for, how great is that? So what right. we do is we have a number of 
facilities that can start building and preparing for delivery the all the Last week, we, right. we saw that you got to be careful what terms you use too, right? Because modular, yeah. okay, but you know, you still have that manufactured banging on the door now that they right. can mortgage like real property and it, it's not personal property anymore. Right. Um, you know, as long as there's air in the tires, I guess, no, it's not quite that effect, but you know, I'm you got some, yeah. um, you, you got some panelization going on, you have all these things, but the bottom line is, Let's train. Let's prepare. I know you're working with Greg Zick and you're working with a, a, a number of different avenues now uh, yeah. where we are as a, as a federation at NAHB. And you're saying, let's get these young people in our new entrance to the workforce ready to go. And uh, that is one of the biggest things. So you have your economies of scale when you're purchasing materials and you're getting them delivered in bulk, you have labor, but there's also the ability to build in so many of the cutting edge uh, uh, directions that we're going. I, I'll give you an example, energy efficiency in all of its forms, right? You could do that much easier setting it up and delivering it on every unit that comes out of a factory and you could control it much better. You start doing that at, at a number of different sites, even like my company that we have a few different communities we're building in all the time, even holding that consistent Sometimes whether, you know, it, it's uh, whatever type of new method or new products that you're introducing, let's get some consistency there too. And it really helps, you know, Energy Star certification, green building, all of these things that you can stamp it on and have it delivered, very helpful to a builder. Yeah, and as you can see, like with the banners that are up there, you know, what is the formula for cost savings? If you're in the audience out there, you know, hey, chime into this conversation. I already see there were some comments that so we'll get to those comments as well. Uh, you know, but the formula for cost savings equals energy efficiency plus affordability, right? That's right. That's right. And, you know, I see here where um, one of the things that – I said as well last week that this workforce piece has just right. really hit me like a stack of bricks lately. I'm hearing that feedback too, Dave. I, I didn't want to stop, but I, I and I'm not sure why. But yeah, I'm um, not sure where it's coming from. I, I, yeah, I'm just looking at the comment too. Um, somebody says, "Check your cell phone." Somebody might somehow be on that isn't yeah. muted, but um, we should be okay. So if you're out there listening and you're getting feedback and it's uh, and it's horrible, let us know in the comments real quick. So I'm not sure what, yeah. what could be causing it. Yep. There we go. But but it's you can still hear everything. So so but back to, you know, when you start talking about the diversity that we can bring into the, the, right. the workforce, as well as increasing its capabilities, right. all these things get very exciting and you can tell by members of the off-site community, right. how excited they are and how strongly they believe. Yeah. Like you could tell to the person, especially the, 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 the people I was fortunate enough to have on the panel, right? I mean, you know, we've been touting it so much, but, you know, there's they're not only believers, but they're willing to teach, educate, and bring everybody along. That's right. Um rather than just simply point and say, hey, this is the way it should be done. They realize that there are some real challenges that builders face every day to think yeah. that we're going to be able to step right up to off-site being the complete answer. Yeah, for sure. And so if you missed it last week, we had a live roundtable uh, with Greg Ugaldi, Henry Mickelberg, uh, Jerry McCahey, and Brittany uh, Campbell-Turner. Now, what was amazing about this entire conversation is that we're all kind of in little separate silos in the industry, panelization, volumetric, uh, you know, stick framing and, and technology and consulting and project management. And this is one of the things we're going to be working on, Greg, like you're talking, we're going to be talking further about workforce housing. We're going to be talking about the workforce 
for our housing, the education. How do we get the young people in? But you know what else we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the formula to success to housing affordability. If you're a builder, how do you quantify some of these applications that we have? How do you look at it? Because if you don't, if you look at it the traditional way, it's hard to understand. But like you just said, Greg, you get Henry and you get Jerry and you get some and Brittany and these folks such as yourself who have been doing this for a long time. They have the answers. Just need to reach out and have these conversations. And we're going to do more roundtables like this, Greg. We're going to keep educating uh, and trying to be educated because we don't have all the answers uh, to, to drive this forward. That's right. And, and I think you, you start seeing some of the openings taking place. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges that, that we have as builders, when we have customers that, you know, when, when you're signing a contract from day one, you don't necessarily know the exact spots that you want your windows in or how do you want your breakfast nook or, you know, did you really, I don't know if that's enough windows overlooking this view in your home. Right. All of these things people dismiss. Cause I, I was thinking after the, the, you know, we got our juices flowing in the last conversation and what are some of these issues that yeah. you face? That's a big one is that if one or two changes that you know are coming with change orders, you know, you, you and I used to talk about this because you've had some very good success. Right. And Dave, what you and Jen have done is you've taken some, you know, not your simple little one box, if you will, uh, but you've had some pretty elaborate homes and some pretty uh, sophisticated yeah. customers that you've been able to put through this system. Those are the things that we have to um, start looking at. I, I have to tell you a story I, I see as an analogy here. And after that, we got off and, you know, it was tough last week, too, because you didn't have a lot of time for stories. You had to make points because there were, you know, so many four, of four of us that had some some real and you had some great add ins, too. So five five mics needed to be satisfied. But, you know, we had a thing. Just take something as simple as OSB. Remember when OSB was uh, first introduced, there, there, was a, there was a time period that people would just soak it in water and show how it expanded at the end, how this doesn't work. It's not a, a, a viable product for home building. You right. can't trust it. Well, as they developed and compacted and were able to um, improve on it, it was... Okay, now what do we do? How do we rebrand right. and let the so so what we did, and this is is one of the challenges, and I think one of the things that that we'll look to do in the future with some of these products too off site. But I think that what we ended up doing, we said, look at you buy your house here, and you know, in these three communities, we started with it. Right. You have you get your plywood, but if you opt for OSB, you could take one of these three other products, uh, um, a whole house attic fan, um, right. upgraded cabinets, um, shingle uh, upgrade. We, we, we offered a few alternatives and yeah. everybody took the alternatives and OSB, yeah. right? Why not save the money there? So now you drive through the community and you see everybody has OSB again. And they're like, oh, well, OSB isn't so bad. Look at what all this. Is. And so we were be, we were able to build into the housing affordability right. side with more affordable products at the time. Yep. And we were able to do it where buyers didn't feel like we were forcing it on them or, hey, look at this builder. They're not going to use plywood. No, they made the choice. I have a feeling that as we start looking at some of these concepts, that's what we might see is the alternatives and what they can mean and what they right. can deliver. Maybe it's separate streets, maybe it's separate communities that some of us could, could do, but I really think that you're gonna see that we're gonna be able to take some, some big steps here in the near future. Yeah, no, I agree. I think technology is gonna play a part in it. Building products for sure playing a part in it, because you're right, that the analogy with the OSB, I mean, Think about it. Zip sheathings, OSB, but you see it everywhere now. And yeah. it, it, it's everything advances. 
everything advances. So we're going to advance. And that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Our industry is going to advance. You know, my soapbox is I'm tired of being in the last place. We're not going to be in the last place right. in the industry anymore. We have the smartest people in the world in our industry. I mean, super smart people, Greg, you know, to include yourself and others. And I, I really do believe that that is uh, that is the way of the future and, and choices. We need choices. Consumers need choices because guess right. what? It's the consumer who buys our product. And we need to meet the demand of the consumer and we have to meet the demand and make sure that what we're delivering is affordable and healthy for them to, to boot as well. That's, that's, a lot. that's right. And, and, you know, I, when you look at some of the products that are considered yeah. offsite construction this day, day and age, I mean, one of the things, even in my own neighborhood, we have a half dozen offsite constructed homes that are integrated and are beautiful. I mean, they're there because don't forget, you can do all these fancy stone features. You right. can build in a ton of things that you're in a controlled environment, making it perfect before it leaves. Right. And people don't realize that, you know, you don't have to fight 10, 10 degrees below zero weather That's the right. day that you have to close it up or whatever. No. Everything is like, you know, and you don't have to wait for the exact people, the professionals you need. No, they, they're, right. they're right there at your facility. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get pretty excited about it. And we've, um, you know, I even look, David, j just different applications. I see that there's going to be a need because rental, we talk about the American dream of home ownership. And uh, that is definitely still what everybody strives to. But with this challenge to make sure that people are seeing the appreciated value, it looks like rates may stay lower for a while. There's going to be a, P, a market space that opens up that we could have detached rental product as well. And to me, that is just begging for some of these Let's let's start setting up a, a, a lot of units because the trick there is going to be to lock in <laughs> to business models. But, you know, you're going to lock into a lower interest rate. You're going to get these things financed. And you're going to let people move in and start their kids in school and, and uh, so on. It, it's, you know, the one thing is you mentioned, you have to be at the cutting edge in our industry. Right. You know, if you're, you know, in a few people do. There's plenty of small builders that are going to do it their way. And that is they stick build. They know how to map that out. They know how to pen it out. Some of them are still using their same plans from year to year. That's right. But there's many more that want to be at the cutting edge and to try to take advantage of where we're going to go in the future and what that means. And I think that that's the excitement of the offsite industry. And it, it is. I mean, you hit a couple of things there. People have to realize that offsite is just a process. It's not a type of home. We're still building to the same codes that that the that a site builder is building to. We're just yeah. putting it together a little bit differently, you know. And that that's kind of the analogy of I always said: you want your car built in your driveway, or you want your car built at the manufacturer. Most people want it built at the manufacturer, even though it'll still go down the highway at the same speed. They would prefer yeah. that new car manufacturer smell. So there's a, there's a lot of efficiencies and a lot of uh, a lot to gain from those efficiencies, not only from a builder's perspective, a supplier's perspective, but the consumer wins, right? We help right. the consumer win. And when the consumer wins, we all win because the consumer's buying our products. And, you know, that's what we're all here, you know, doing. We're, we're making, putting product out there for people, right? And that's- That's, that's right. And, and demand's going to carry the day, right? And yeah. that's what we started on last week and the, the next time. And I, and I do appreciate you saying that we're going to pull, you know, part two of that conversation. Absolutely. And I think you saw from the feedback that it is going to be, um, and, and one of the things that happens, Dave, and you, you know, we've been talking about this, three of us were talking about this Saturday, was that, you know, the shelf life of these types of product that you're putting out there are going to be key because somebody's yeah. going to say, no, I heard that talked about. I heard those statistics used. Right. And that's where you're seeing the schools using all your, uh, all the content that you have available. But the next step is really going to be addressing some of the concerns and what builders are feeling are the impediments or the hurdles we have to get over, but right. also 
what customers are going to want to see to be able to demand this type of product. Like sure. once they see it, once they enjoy it. And, and you remember just the, the, the thing that we had with um, Secretary Carson, we're looking to reestablish some of that. Right, but right. when you can put products in high demand places, we did it on the mall in Washington, D.C. That's right. Tens of thousands of people kicking the tires literally on manufactured homes. But yeah. you you demonstrate what these things can be and how they work. That's right. You know, we had a little bit of it, and I don't know if you remember, there was even a 3D component that the government put on to right. show that they not only built the house, but will build the car at the same time. Still, that's a little freaky, right? That you push the copy <laughs> button and the house comes out. But, you know, it's it's getting there. It it's really gotta be there. is. Yeah, no, it, it truly is getting there. I mean, look at what Jupe is doing, you know, some of these other more, you know, there, there's some really, really uh, neat product that's coming out there to address what we have going on. And the education side of this, Greg, and uh, you, you brought it up a few times, you're absolutely right. Because guess what? We are, we are currently streaming live to some of the classrooms. They're using yes. our content in the classrooms. And we're working on programming to stream live to, you know, a wider range of classrooms moving across uh, the country and Greg in Europe, which is going to be even right. you know spectacular. And guess who the buyers are in the next 10, 15 years? Those students coming out of college. That's we right. need to educate them. We need to talk to them. Uh, that's why we're on Twitch, right, Greg? That's why we go to that's Twitch. Right. Even Greg's on Twitch. We got to go where they're at. But the education side of this is so, so powerful and so important. And, uh, you know, that's that's what we try to do here. That's what you're trying to do as well in your position. And and so everybody realizes you are a builder. I mean, you're, you're still building houses and, and condos and whatever it is. Uh, and and this, is, this, is a, this is a volunteer thing that you have also with the NAHB to grow what's going on. So you're dedicating a lot of your time to an industry that you yourself live and breathe and have to buy product from and have to purchase yeah. product it affects you as much as it affects everybody else. And that's what's so great that people need to understand that when it comes to these policies and what's happening on the Hill, I guess I can use the Hill. That's what you guys use in DC, right? Yeah. On the Hill, it's nice to know that the people represented us are the same people that get impacted by bad policy. If it goes through and you're there to help represent it. So I love this whole, con I could go on. You got all day. Yeah, 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 right. And, but but you know what's going to happen, Dave? You know, there's, you know, and I watch Miles and I watch, you know, uh, Fridays is so great, too. I mean, you guys just have some, some great conversations and, you know, you can watch them anytime, everybody. You know, half the time it's, uh, it's late on a weekend night, whatever. You just kind of tune in. But uh, Mark's great. You know, you look at some of these concepts and what's going to happen. Make no mistake about it. At some point, you're going to be looking and the people that are going to be driving the cart, exactly what you said, when you look at the people that are learning differently, they're going to say, I don't want one of these outdated ones. I want yeah. something that's cutting edge. You know, right. I want all these energy efficiency and energy star and energy conservation type things. I want these right. green. Uh, you know what? I want a diverse workforce working on my house. Here it is. All your stamps, everything laid out, just like you get with a car. And whatever components um, where where it gets exciting, too, is you know the challenges that we have to keep the cost down between right. getting our labor force around the country. We, we talk about this part yeah. is being reached out. You know, we, we, we have a, um, the average age of plumbers and electricians, for example, in most of the country is right. at a point where we have to start seriously consider how that's going to work. All of these things point to a way. Find me the efficiencies. And that's where we are. And that's why I spend so much time. You know this, how we've got this group that really believe that, that we're on to something here and that we are out front in what you're able to do by putting all the conversations, all the topics, the issues under one roof where people know. I think on Dave Cooper Live, they talked about this. I think you can always look there. You want to be the front of the line resource and yeah. that's what you're establishing. That's right. Hey, listen, you know, 
nobody's having these conversations like we're having them live for as long as we've been doing it. Six days a week, Greg. This act, this up, this week actually is our full year. Yes, one full year. May have been late a few times. You know, may have had some hiccups, but we never miss the day. Six days a week, and and out of most of those six days a week, I would say out of three to five of those days, we've always had guests on the show from this country and from around the world, bringing you content, so much content that you were mentioning earlier, and I really appreciate that. The universities are looking at the data, the research centers are taking the data from all these videos and really trying to understand what's happening in the market. How is it changing? What is the what is the buyers doing? All of these conversations we've been having here, and just like last week's show, we had hundreds, of, you know I mean? on Like tune in for that show. That's how big it is. And it all lives on Dave Cooper Live on our YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, and we're being consumed right now. I think I, I looked the other day. I'm, I'm about a half a day short of 24 hours a day of our content nonstop playing. That means people are watching it that much that it's constantly being played. So, I mean, it really is cool. And Greg, you know, having you on the show and being part of this conversation for offsite construction, for the builders out there, even if you're not offsite, there is something for everybody, for everybody. Let's learn together. Let's collaborate together. Let's grow the industry together. Why don't we take some comments? Sure. Let's see who's out there today. Oh, we got Buzz Holitzer. Hey, he says, he says, Fappy Monday. That's, that's code for PH Monday. Love it. Love it. Love it. What's happening, Buzz? Passive House. You guys are awesome. All right. CV, CM Pravada coming to us from LinkedIn. How can BIM, Building Information Management, mandate like the federal government implement and improve the efficiency of construction, supply chains, integration of new technologies, or accelerate regulatory approvals? This is an interesting one. So how, how can BIM, Building Information Management, you got any, you got any thoughts on that? So, so I think that's one of the big challenges we have yeah. because that's really at the crux of an issue. It's actually a very good question. Right. Um, you know, when, when you look at the, the root of what's being suggested here, especially when you talk about the regulatory approvals and what that timeline looks like, that in itself addressing those in a more timely, more efficient and effective way to handle it, it's going to save money right there. So yes, the, the, the federal government always likes to require and mandate and do things that they deem during a debate, they get their legislative history together and they come up with the answer. Sometimes I think you, you're better off going right to the market participants. And like this says, you know, talk to the people. Where are you getting held up in the regulatory approval process? And at the end of the day, to shave off time in any way, you're, you're, you're ahead of the eight ball and you're, you're fighting a, 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 the good fight. So, so that's something we constantly keep an eye on and right. is part of this conversation. You know, I do have to mention, don't underestimate Gen 2 on Tuesdays. The Coopers, when you're together, having been there yourself on the front line and builders yourself, yep. those are great shows. When you can talk about from personal experience and just where the market's headed from being there, those are valuable. And I think that, that those are the kinds of, um, that's the information that a lot of new people exploring. And we all are to some extent. I mean, when we're at three, four, five percent of offsite construction, that means that everybody's still new at this. You know, even when you look at uh, Jerry and Henry and people like that, that that do have a leg up right now, yep. you know, what they look like in five years is going to be different and improved. But that's where we start identifying the issues that we really need to, just like that question was. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and to add to the, you know, we had part of this conversation last Monday with the federal government and regulation and codes, you know, all the different things that affect the supply chain and how we build and what we do. Um, you know, I, we, in Europe, you know, the federal government and the, and the country, they got involved in the code, which isn't going to happen here. What, what about, what about getting our government to lead by example though, right? 
Are they tuning into these conversations? Are they listening to VA hospital and all these other organizations out there that have the opportunity to, to save money, use offsite construction, get it open faster, get the, get the public tax money working for the public. I mean, there's such a good sales pitch just for the federal government to use offsite, uh, it, it, you know, because it, it saves money. It could and move people along. I'm just curious on your thoughts there because we'll never get it mandated. You know, you know, it's interesting because that is one of our go-to arguments, if you will. One of our positions right. is, hey, look, if we're going to talk about this being the new requirements and where we're headed, yeah. well, it, it's got to work for the government too. So they're like any other applicant. So, yeah. so for state legislation around the country, all the towns, the municipalities have to use right. it. Let's make sure. And that's one of the things that we try to insist upon. And I, I think that the point you're making is, is, is such a good one in that when we um, and, and maybe when we pull together what my next update will be, you know, for, for the next stop that I make on yeah. your show, we'll figure out who, who you want me to bring and, and so on. But one of the things that, that we can look at is this, um, the new energy uh, code efforts that we've made. So now the, the new committee is going to be handling energy efficiency in the codes by using an ANSI type standard where it's way just like our green building standard is. Right. And there's going to be people from all walks that have input. And there will be, for the first time, a defined, you know, a component that has to do with evaluating what what the um, affordability efficiency is so, so that there are numbers that will be brought in so that you can't just say right. require anything regardless of cost. You have to be able to balance, you know, because you, you can always make things a little bit better. But if it costs a million dollars a home to make yeah, it, yeah. it can't you can't do it. So. Yeah. All of these things, but um, that that's the, the challenge that you have. And I and I like, by the way, to hear some of the new strategies that you're going to implement because you're right at the, you know, after a year, you know, one or two things was going to happen. Uh, one, you were going to wither and decide that, that it was time to uh, coach your kids hockey full time or you were going to bust at the seams. Well, your mobile office now and mobile studio have pointed, you're busting at the seams, just as we predicted and hoped. Yeah, yeah. And so now you're going to have to really pay attention to the quality of content and the different avenues. You know, you got right. you got Dave Cooper live in such demand that you have to start making some some tough decisions and heading down the the best roads where you can make the biggest impact. And that's just so yeah. exciting. It, it is exciting. It's really not a tough decision. It's funny, Greg. You have these conversations with so many people. You know, it's, everybody has a gut instinct. Right. And we've just kind of been following our gut and saying, hey, listen, it's going to we're going to keep it educational. We're going to interview people. We're going to do all the right things and showcase the people that are doing something great, something better, something different. And these are these are all very powerful, powerful things. So we are going to change up the show a little bit. We are going to bring the consumer in because guess what drives demand? Consumers. And if we can get the consumers part of our conversations, Greg, and we grow that side of it and we get the education, we get the universities, we get the high schools, we get the trade schools, all of these uh, different entities that are part of our roadshow that we're doing this year. It's going to be absolutely amazing and it's going to be a benefit for all of us. And I think that's uh, I, I think it'll be different, but it won't be hard. I think it's just a, it'll be so much. I'm having fun to begin with, man. I mean, yeah. Come on. Yeah, it's going to be a lot. It's of great. And, you know, you start winning awards and you start, you know, pretty soon you're going to yeah. be, uh, you know, I mean, that's but yeah. but, you know, and, and, and people should know, too, that it it doesn't happen by accident. It's a lot of commitment and tough right. work. And you're constantly, constantly trying out uh, new ways to do things, better ways to broadcast. It, right. It's just a lot of great stuff. But you can also see that doors are opening 
they are oh, asking you to you sit down and, and start saying, how can we bring this to the table? How can we get this discussed? Um, you know, what, what call were you on a, a couple weeks ago with the universities again? Like, you got to get our kids out. You got to get our kids to job sites and the yeah. students able to start working with their hands in an industry that that's what we're selling and that's what it's right. all about. Yeah. And you're the perfect vehicle to get people to pay attention to that. I don't know what to say. I, I'm going to, I'm going to reach through, hug you and maybe give you a kiss on your forehead here. I, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we are. We're having, Hey, listen, Greg, it, we're, it takes all of us. We're all pulling together and you're absolutely right. Um, I have a, doing a little video on this, Greg, we won member of the year to this year for national association of home builders, Dave Cooper live for the building systems council. We were the member of the year. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, we got a nice award yeah. in the mail. Our mail takes a while to catch up with us because we're on the road. So we've been waiting you know, and I know you've been saying you got to tell people, you know, so uh, yeah. when you get awards, but we, we we are so lucky and so blessed. And everybody really has to understand there's a team here. Jennifer and I were always at it. Uh, you know, I, I'm good at running my mouth, but the real intelligence comes from from Jennifer and and and, and other people that help do the show. So, uh, so, hats so off. you don't know, but Mark's going to be presenting you with the Burger King crown on Friday. So that you have to. <laughs> I got it, man. I'm ready. That would be funny, but um, no, yeah. congratulations. And I, yeah. and I think that, um, you know, it's, it's, so here's the year breather, right? And maybe you should do a, a, a I was thinking about that and we, we could talk more um, off air too, but, but, you know, do a celebratory type. Here's where we've grown in a year. And, um, you know, I know when you were traveling a little bit, you did some key shows and replayed them. Remember you threw me off one day and you're like, no, 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 I'm not really live. I'm like, wait, what's going on? Right. Yeah, yeah. But I think that you could, uh, and plus Howard Stern and, and the real guys always do this too. The big guys see that yeah. there's a formula that works, but, you know, bring up some of the topics and show the roadmap of where you're taking it in, in the future. Very exciting. Well, we are. We are. We have some reports that we're working on, Greg. We, like I said, and you're right. Um, you know, even those shows, though, we were live. We were just playing some really good recordings and stuff. Just like I, I it's uh, sometimes it's like herding cats. People have things that come up last minute, can't make the show. And we want to make sure we always provide good content. And that's what we do. So Greg, we're in an hour and 10 minutes, man. I, I love this. Um, All right. Hopefully, hopefully we're, we're, our paths are going to cross soon and we can, uh, we can do a lot. I'd love to do a live round table together where we're all sitting on some chairs across from each other and we live stream it to the world. I think it would be amazing thing. And uh, I think our next conversation, Greg, should be, uh, with some other industry experts, maybe some of the ones that were already on the panel talking about how financially do you quantify the value of offsite construction in today's world? I think we should really start diving into it because there's a lot of people like Jerry and others out there have this data. They've been working with some builders across the country. Uh, and I think it's time to start sharing that information that we've gathered over the over the last year. What do you think? And, and you know what, too? And one of the things I'm going to offer up to sure. a, a couple of these we're going to have to find, and, and you're familiar with the the, the um, delivery systems that need to take place up here. You've described some of the difficulties in certain times, but some of the better ways to do it. But uh, maybe I'll open up like a pilot type uh, endeavor so that we can actually do a real one, you know, Um and uh, just open wow. it up so people can see. And uh, wow. I wouldn't mind doing that. And we can, uh, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll see who the best team would be for that. And if we all work together, um, I, I, I think we could really have some fun with it. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm all over that. I bet we could get the suppliers that support us and others that are out there to actually provide product and help us pull something off as a demo project to showcase. And uh, I think it'd be great because you are a builder and you have a great team uh, that this can be done anywhere, you know, whether it's in Connecticut or wherever we decide to do it. So if yeah. you're a supplier and you're listening to this and you're interested in understanding how offsite works, this could be a good, uh, good opportunity for you. And if you're a manufacturer or like Jerry from Integra or modular, or maybe we do a hybrid approach, it could yeah. be, it could be a ma amazing project. All right, everybody. Go ahead, Greg. You got something else? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, because, you know, we do, um, you know, homes of the year and, and uh, different types of things, efforts with local and state um, 
Home Builder Association. So, right. so I mean, my wheels are turning now after I said that because I really think that we can pull something like this together. And I think you can see by the excitement of a lot of people that hop on right. these calls that are in this loop. So we'll, we'll talk definitely talk more about it. Yeah, yeah, and we'll probably get the DOE and some others on on the energy side. A lot okay. of we can make it a home of the future, not just off site, but home That's of the right. future too. That's the kind of thing I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, guess speaking of homes of the future. This Wednesday, Greg, uh, we have Rick Murdoch on, the CEO <laughs> and founder of AutoVol. Now, most people know who AutoVol is, you know, if you're in the offsite industry. If you are not, it is one of the most highly talked about, highly robotic manufacturing facilities for volumetric modular building in the United States. We're slowly trickling out the information on it. And guess who you're going to see, uh, see the CEO on first here? Dave Cooper Live. And we will be giving you some inside looks. We're going to be heading to that manufacturing facility as well. Uh, this is going to be amazing. And you know what's great that I find, Greg, with some of these people that are doing amazing thing? They are, they're just down to earth, like just so chill, so like so culturally oriented when it comes to their people uh, that they work with right? That it's amazing. And I think Wednesday is going to be a big show. I think we're going to have a big turnout. So hopefully, hopefully you can get some folks at the NAHB to tune in and check out what we're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that sounds great. It really does. I look forward to that. Yep. All right. So join us Wednesday. Jennifer and I will see you tomorrow. It is our one year. So we're going to be doing some uh, look backs on the year tomorrow with Jennifer. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut because she steals the show all the time. And uh, we're going to have some fun with it. We're going to talk a little bit about what we have coming up next year. So for all of you out there, Greg, thank you so much for taking your Thanks. time. Uh, thank and you. John McGeary, thank you if you're still listening in the background. We really appreciate your time. Uh, let me just see. I see one more pop up here. We're good. Henry and Mickelberg and everybody else is doing some likes. Greg, we will talk uh, right after the outro. You stay right there and everybody else. We'll see you tomorrow and put Wednesday Thanks. on your calendar for sure. Bye now.